One day, I'll be getting rid of nearly all these fragrances, but I will keep a small number and it's going to involve some heartbreaking and ruthless decisions. If I had to get rid of most of these fragrances, which ones would I keep? I'm going to be getting pretty serious in this video. It's been on my mind lately that I have a lot of fragrances here, an obscene amount, and I'm obviously never going to use them all. So what happens to them? What I don't want to happen is that they outlive me and become a burden or a problem for my family to deal with. I told you I was getting serious. I have so many because I do this channel and at some point I will stop doing this channel. And after living with so many fragrances for the last few years, I think I want to strip it right back. I want to take all the knowledge I've gained, all the thousands of different scents I've smelled and distill it all down to just 10. I could right now easily pick 100 stunning fragrances, but I want less. I want the absolute best of the best and I don't want to be overwhelmed by choice. I come to these shelves to choose a fragrance and it's overwhelming. I know first world problems, but it actually makes choosing hard sometimes. Settling on these 10 final fragrances has involved some really tough, ruthless decisions and there's so much that's personal when connecting with a scent. It may be linked to a certain holiday or event like wedding or birth of a child. So the fragrances I pick may not have such a personal connection for you. So just be aware that these choices are based on more than just how they smell. It's based on what they mean to me, how they affect me, what I'm reminded of when I wear them and how they make me feel. That being said, they're all nailed on bangers, so let's get into it. In no particular order, I'm going to start with a fragrance that is probably my favourite. It's so special to me, I own three different versions of this. It has a cola float type of smell mixed in with some cognac and some smoke. It's Roger Parfum's Enigma. And I first heard about this fragrance when watching Red Lessons. Stephen raved about this. The way he described it just made me feel compelled to try it. So I ordered some samples and after having a few decants, I actually decided it would be my first full retail niche bottle purchase, which was actually this one, the EDP. I purchased this from Selfridges. I think it cost me about 240, 250 pounds. This version is actually discontinued now. You can't buy it anymore. I also have the Parfum Cologne and the Parfum. If I could only choose one version of Enigma to keep, I'd have to go with the Parfum because it's the strongest and most pure version of this smell. It's a mind blowingly good fragrance. It's on another level. I love to wear this for for special occasions, for formal occasions. I've got some very strong uh, emotional attachments and memories with this fragrance. Uh, Roger himself actually gifted me this bottle in person when I went to meet him in Milan. I wore this when I was best man at my best friend's wedding. And I wore the Parfum Cologne version when I went to visit Carlos. Brooklyn fragrance lover in Brooklyn who is sadly no longer with us but I've got some really nice memories of meeting Carlos and shooting some videos with him and just having a laugh and having a good time and getting to know each other. So I have so many emotions and memories tied up in this fragrance that it certainly does influence my choice in, in having this in my final 10 but even before I'd created all those memories. I still thought this was a stunning scent and it's one that I can't imagine not having in my collection. Moving on to the next one and quite a few of these in my final 10 have really good versatility but this one in particular is ultra versatile. It's Prada Lom. It's not a blue freshie, but I can wear this in the warmer weather. I can also wear it casually. I can wear it formally. I can wear it in the winter. In fact, I cannot think of an occasion where this beautiful powdery iris scent wouldn't work. I've even enjoyed wearing this in the gym. It's the sort of scent that could easily be a signature scent. If you only wanted one really good fragrance that you could wear for lots of different scenarios and occasions, I think Prada Lom would really fit into that. For me, this fragrance is very similar and almost interchangeable with the discontinued Dior Homme which I also think is incredible. I've decided to include this in the final 10 just because this one is still available and if anyone was interested in trying the fragrances that I'm talking about in this video then you'd really struggle to get hold of Dior Homme Eau but they're both very similar. Prada Lom is uh, amazing and I love it every time I wear it. For the next one I'm going to another of my favourite brands and I love this brand so much because their fragrances are just so damn wearable. The fragrance I'm picking from Parfum de Mali is my favourite from the house and it is of course Carlisle. Carlisle is a sweet, fruity, spicy scent with a really intense 
woody backbone. It's thick, it's rich, it's a real powerhouse. So it performs amazingly well in the colder weather. So I love wearing this one in the autumn and the winter. It's got that rare balance of being super statement making, but mass appealing at the same time. It walks that fine line. So it's incredibly satisfying for me to wear, but I think it's nice for other people to smell and it definitely gets noticed. The sweet tobacco is right up my street. I will always want the option of being able to choose the powerhouse that is Carlisle in my fragrance collection. I'm going to the house of Nasamato for this next one and they make some incredible sense. My favorite of theirs has to be Pardon. This is another very distinctive statement making kind of scent. It's got quite an addictive chocolatey patchouli smell. I've had some really nice compliments on this. I tend to mainly wear it in the autumn and the winter, but here in the UK, I could easily wear this on some spring days and maybe even some cooler summer days. It has that quality that pretty much all the fragrances in this video have, and it's something that's quite important to me. I want to obviously love wearing the fragrance myself, but it's always nice if your fragrance is gonna be enjoyed by those around you because it's fine to smell nice for yourself maybe if you're at home, but when you're going out into the public, you do want people around you to, to not be repulsed by your smell. So the ideal thing is to have something that gets noticed, but that people love. And Pardon is certainly one of those that does that for me. I find this to be awesome for formal occasions, nights out. I remember I was going to a works Christmas party once I was on the dance floor and the person dancing next to me just put their hand on my shoulder and said, Chris, you smell amazing. What on earth are you wearing? And uh, it was this, it was Pardon. I would be very sad if I never had the option to wear this fragrance again. The next fragrance is another of my absolute favorites. This is from one of my favorite designer houses and it's Diorom Intense. This is similar powdery iris to Prada Lom, but this has obviously a bit more intensity and a little more complexity. It's a bit more assertive. It's got a bit more attitude. I've worn this all over the place. Intimate occasions, formal occasions, parties. Every time I wear this fragrance, I just know it's gonna get the job done with style. I will say that I probably enjoy Dior en Parfum, which is another masterpiece fragrance. I enjoy that just as much as this, but I'm choosing Dior en Intense because it's just got that little bit of extra versatility. And when I'm picking only 10 fragrances, versatility has to be a consideration. My beloved Naxos from Zerjoff. This is a honey tobacco fragrance with citrus and lavender. I think it's a masterpiece. It's loved by pretty much everyone. It's strong and it's long lasting, but it's not so heavy that its versatility is compromised. I can enjoy this on a cold winter's day as much as I can on a warmer spring day. Again, I cannot envisage a world where I don't have Naxos on my shelf to choose from. If you love fragrance as much as I do, head over to my online store luxparfum.co.uk. You'll find my favorite brands plus brands you can't find anywhere else in the UK. Link is in the description. The next fragrance I credit as being responsible for all of this, for me starting to collect fragrances, for me starting this channel. When I smelled this fragrance for the first time, I didn't know a scent could smell as intoxicating as this and it's Oud Wood. It opened up my eyes to what fragrance could be. It opened up my olfactory floodgates and I took that deep dive down that fragrance rabbit hole that so many of us have ended up falling down. This to me is just a stunning masterpiece of a fragrance. It's one that I have a very strong, positive, emotional connection to. It is more subtle than a lot of the fragrances in this video. It's certainly not a powerhouse, but I think it's good to have a little bit of subtlety as an option in the lineup. I can wear this all year round. I can wear it for any occasion. Very special fragrance to me, and it's one that I will always want nearby. When I took that deep dive down the fragrance rabbit hole, when I started my channel, and when I started joining Facebook groups, one fragrance was constantly talked about as being one of the best and a must own for anyone. So of course I had to own it. I bought this as a partial from a Facebook group and I'm really glad I did. It's 
Creed Aventus. If I only owned one fragrance, Aventus is another one that would do a fine job. This could easily be a signature scent. I'd probably eventually start to get sick of it after a while, but I think that would be the case with any fragrance if I owned just one. But this is such an invigorating, exciting, vibrant type of smell. It smells rich, it smells natural. Of all the fragrances, in this video, in my final 10, this is probably the closest to a freshie and it works really well in the summer. As you know, it's a year round fragrance. It's got that ultra versatility. And when I'm compiling a list of just 10 fragrances, then like I said, versatility has to be a consideration rather than choosing too many fragrances that lock me into specific seasons. Aventus certainly does not do that. It's a legend, it's Aventus and it would be part of my final lineup of 10. I've got to choose another Tom Ford fragrance and whilst I adore Tuscan leather, I'm actually choosing ombre leather. This has that similar raspberry leather combo, but it's done in such an easy to wear, mass appealing way. It's very noticeable. It lasts all day. I can wear this for many different scenarios, but when I'm wearing a leather jacket, ombre leather, hits the spot, it's the perfect companion. If I was going to be honest, I would say that Tuscan leather is the scent that maybe stimulates me just a little bit more. It's perhaps a little more complex, a bit more interesting, but the added versatility of ombre leather and the fact that they do smell very similar, that versatility just tips the balance in favor of ombre. Vintage La Malle used to be my signature scent and that is a hell of a scent. And if it was still available in that formulation, this might have crept into that final 10, but it's not. So the fragrance I'm choosing is Amouage's Reflection 45. This reminds me of Vintage La Malle, but a whole lot more. It's got that Amouage statement making quality. I keep mentioning statement making pretty much for all these fragrances, but that's why they're in the list. That's why I've chosen them because I like my fragrance to make a little bit of a statement. It's got the sandalwood, it's got iris, it's got jasmine, it's got the resins. It's complex, but it's not too complicated. Really easy to wear fragrance, but it's got a perfectly calibrated earthy intensity, which just gives it some extra attitude, which takes it from just excellent to exhilarating. It's another Swiss Army fragrance that I can wear whenever, wherever. It's going to do the job every time. If push came to shove and I had to only have one fragrance, this one would definitely do the job for me. But I'm never only just going to own one fragrance. So Reflection 45 will fit very, very nicely into my final lineup of 10. So those are my final 10 fragrances. If I was going to really strip back my fragrance wardrobe and only have 10 fragrances to choose from. And I've got to say, there's something really appealing about that. After being surrounded by all these fragrances, I just like the idea of, of just having such a small number to choose from, but a small number of fragrances that are amazing, that I know will work for any occasion. I've got everything covered with the ones I've chosen. I know 10 is probably still a lot for most regular people. Most regular people maybe have one, two, three fragrances, but for me, I can't ever envisage owning less than 10. I think 10 is the smallest amount I could ever get to. And the other thing to remember is these are what I've chosen in this moment in a year, two years, five years, 10 years, maybe my choices would change. Maybe other fragrances would come along that would usurp some of the ones that I've chosen for this video. But I partially wanted to, to make this because I thought it would be an interesting video, but also I just wanted to get thinking about which ones would I keep when I have to start making those tough decisions. I can look back on this video and uh, I can remind myself of the choices that I made and go, oh yeah, those are the ones that I thought I would keep. So it uh, makes life a little bit easier for, for future Chris. So what do you think of my choices? I don't expect everybody to agree with them. As I said, there's a lot of personal and emotional uh, connections tied in with those fragrances. And you'll have your own that you have personal and emotional connections with. I'd be really interested to know what yours are. Let me know what your final 10 lineup would be. They, they could be designer or niche or just designer or just niche, well, whatever you want. Just pick the fragrances that mean the most to you and ones that you feel like you could never be without. Drop those 
down in the comments below. If you like this video, you know what to do. Give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you do all that, I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.